I will just do a quick, uh, brief history of the open risk because I realize that not everyone here knows what we're about to do. Um, and then I will talk briefly about what happened, has happened since last year. Um, I have prepared too much, so it will be pretty free form. Uh, I want to introduce myself. I work for Campcom, which is a consultant uh, company for doing uh, signal processing and uh, hardware and embedded stuff. And I also work as a risk developer. Um, I've been mostly working with a project called FuseSoc, which is a system on chip build <coughs> and simulation framework. Uh, I maintain a few cores and I try to write a bit about uh, what we're doing in the community. So, the OpenRisk project uh, aimed to define a free open source architecture and provide implementations. Uh, it's probably the oldest one we can find, uh, which is still active. First one was our OpenRisk 1000 architecture, which is still the one, only one we use. Uh, it was implemented as the ORK1 SIM, which is a C model, and the OR1200, which is a very large model of the processor. Uh, it also was initiated, initiated along with Open Course, the biggest open, course, open source hardware community. This was back in 1999, uh, both OpenRisk and Open Course was launched, uh, and in about 2002, the company called Flextronics took commercial interest in this and uh, invested money and resources to make ASICs, uh, commercial ASICs. <coughs> And a few years later, about 2004 and 2005, they lost interest, and uh, the original founders lost interest, and of course it was just deteriorating uh, for a few years, and nothing, not much happened. In 2007, a Swedish company called Orsoc buys open course, uh, with the objective of uh, reinvigorating uh, efforts to, to uh, make open risk better. And they started working on improving the open core site and uh, fixing bugs in the open risk and platform and found a few commercial projects. Uh, mainly one pretty important one was so to put an open risk in space as part of the NASA Tech Headset uh, program. Along this we also got official Linux support since I think it's Linux 3.1 as uh, official support for open risk. <coughs> Earlier this year we had uh, Bing utils upstream and we're working on GCC right now and we also had our first proper SMB support, symmetrical multi-processing support. And this is only a few highlights, I mean lots more stuff uh, has happened over the years, but um, two important milestones. So the OpenRisk 1000 architecture is a 32-64-bit load store risk. The 64 bit part has never been implemented as far as I know. Uh, it was inspired by the first MIPS, BLX architecture. Uh, basic ISA, integer ISA with uh, uh, modular extensions for floating point and vector uh, processing and instructions and uh, <coughs> the custom instructions. It has caches, a new peak, timer, debug units, power management, pretty much the basic stuff. And the small symbol up in the corner is the instruction set uh, of the different parts of the instruction set. The ORBIS32 is the main uh, integer ISA. As I said earlier, over 1200 was the original for log implementation, and we had over 1P SIM, which is the uh, golden reference C model. A few years ago, uh, Julius and Stefan started working on. Mawar 1KX, which is supposed to be a replacement for the OR1200, which is more modular, faster, and uh, better in every way, I think, now. It even has an FPU now, also. And we have uh, another note for the implementation is the JR1K from Sebastian, uh, which is a JavaScript implementation, so you can run uh, an open risk, boot open risk with uh, Linux and run graphical stuff in your browser, which has lowered the barrier of entry for many people. And there are a lot of more, uh, <coughs> but I'm pretty sure that at least a few guys here have written over risk implementations, uh, uh, either for them existing or written one from scratch. So please raise your hand if you want to be mentioned now. 
So what is it used? One part is research. Uh, Stefan Valentwitz uses it here uh, in Munich for open sock. Uh, we have a guy called Peter Gavin who uses it for his work on branch predictors. Uh, he also wrote the a version of the open risk architecture which has no delay stop, which is an improvement. Uh, it is, I just did a quick Google search and found a list of universities that in some way uses open risk either in education or as part of the research program. And I'm pretty sure there's lots of more uh, universities in this list. It's always used in this, it's also used in the industry. Uh, as I said, NASA Tech is sat. These uh, small boxes, one of them in the top uh, picture, is contains an over risk. I'm not sure which one. Uh, it's also used as part of the UBM reference workflow. So if you're using UBM, you will uh, and try the reference workflow, you will encounter over risk. We found that it's used in all winner uh, 8 at 1 socks, which is a sock for uh, Android, Android tablets. Use that power management. Samsung uses it in their digital TVs, I think for MP3 decoding. Uh, and SIG Basics and many more. I know of many more uh, applications, but I unfortunately can't uh, tell about them because they're under MDAs. It's also used as a hobbyist platform, and I guess that's where one, many people here have come into contact with it. Uh, this is a picture here, it's uh, the Myriad RF which uh, uh, I'm currently working on providing a risk sock for. And this one is a uh, bus pirate with an uh, open risk. Instead, I'm running an FPGA instead of the ADR or whatever is in the uh, original implementation. So, currently, we have come this far. I like this picture so much I have to add it. This is open risk running Debian, Linux, running X, Windows Server running ScanVM running Monkey Island 2. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, and some contact information. I uh, don't think you can read it here, but you can check the slides afterwards. And listed here is also an uh, address to my blog where I provide uh, Open Risk status updates. I did one half a year ago, so I will now talk about the stuff that has happened since then. And I don't have prepared any slides for this, or I will do this free form. So as I said, we have symmetric multiprocessing support, and we have now, uh, since a few months ago, we have now Linux support for the multiprocessor stuff. We support a few new development boards. We support the Altera Neek, thanks to uh, Frank. Uh, we have uh, Socket support, which is a nice board from Teresic, uh, around the risk now. We have new C libraries. We have the Muscle Small Footprint uh, C library that is supported now by uh, Risk. Um, we have also, as part of the Google Summer Code project, we have uh, a guy working on RT EMS uh, operating system board support. Um, and we have a lot of improvements to the Kiwi EMU, which is a system <coughs> emulator for different architectures. And I think that uh, Stefan will talk more about the OptimSock updates, and uh, the other Stefan will talk about more of the MR1KX updates. So that's basically what I had to say today. Was a floating point processor. 
but since just a few weeks or last week or something, I think uh, the support was added for to move the uh, R1200 FPU to MR1 case. So it should now be feature complete and uh, more actively maintained. So your recommendation would be to switch to the new Absolutely. Okay. <coughs> yes, there's a fun question about this open disk in space. This sounds very interesting. Can you explain a little bit more what's at the moment um, uh, in space and what, what this does? Or is it a satellite? Or, or I would guess it's gone back by now, but I'm not sure. <laughs> it, it's, 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 it's landed now. It was cube, it's, it's a CubeSat. It was an educational CubeSat at NASA. Okay, and it, it, it took off two years ago and I think it came back down about a year ago. Okay. Just set things now and then. What 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 did, what, what did it otherwise of education? Does it do any specialties or just at the own propulsion system or or, or just or just peeing to to the earth or what? <laughs> so. Yeah, that's a good question. I, I wasn't involved with the project, so I'm I'm not sure. I would guess it's some kind of just control uh, core for. Uh, yeah. Do you just work with the project? Yeah, it was just uh, kind of, what would you call it? Yeah, a little like a communication hub on the... W Wikipedia's actually got a good page on it. I've oh, just right. checked okay. it. It, 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 it. I don't know, it's, it's actually San Jose State University. I really thought, of, uh, right. I thought it was a Japanese thing. Well, there's a whole load. Oh, there's right. TechEdSat, it was TechEdSat 2, which was the collaboration with the Swedish company that did the right. open risk on it. And NASA was involved there. Yeah, it was just an example of the process of being modified, being made fault tolerant, used on a rad hardened FPGA, and made to you know run Linux and do a bit of kind of uh, synchronization of or rather kind of bridging between different protocols that we used on the on various spacecraft. I think there's a move in the space industry to move towards a very modular kind of standardized comms system for on the spacecraft. Um, instead of everybody you know, inventing their own thing. And this was a, a plug and play thing, I think is it's called like a plug and play standard thing in space. So it was just a, an implementation of that. Used open risk. Cool. Alright, more questions? I'll have more for you over here later. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.